Calculators are really practical if you want to calculate big numbers and in this tutorial we will create the UI for this calculator and in the upcoming tutorial we will look at how we can actually implement the logic for this calculator. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. The first thing we like to do is to create here all these buttons which you see here on the bottom and therefore we go to our build method and here inside we create a column. Here inside we create two sections, so one section is empty for now and the other one there we want to build our buttons inside. For the bottom part we have here a little bit more space like you can see, therefore I put here a flex value of 2 to give it some more space. And we also create later here the upper part where our result will be displayed and this is then the upper part. Now we create this method build buttons and here inside we want to give it first of all some padding because you see here on the left side and on the top and right and bottom we have some space and then inside of it we have here every time some buttons in some rows and basically we have here one, two, three, four, five rows which we need to build. But first of all we want to create here this background and like you can see it has a different color and here at the top it is also rounded. Therefore you simply go to your container here and create this decoration and here inside we create a border radius at the top level. So I put here vertical and then you can supply top or bottom and we only want to supply here the top property and here we set a radius inside to make our top rounded. After it, we can also set here a color and I have created here a class with all the colors which the app is using and here we are using basically this color for this background and now our UI looks like this. So here at the top it is rounded and if you want to have more rounded or less then you can change here this value. The next thing is to actually create here inside all these buttons and therefore we call here this child property and create a column. And now we want to create here all the button rows. So basically each button row has four buttons and that's what we are doing now. So I create here a button row and here inside we set then all the values of our buttons inside. The first two cases are to delete buttons. So this will reset everything and this will simply delete the last character. And then we have here some space and also some operator. So let's put it simply inside. So I create here this back button and I simply define here some character for it and also some empty space and then we also create here this operator. Now we simply go over and create all the other rows so I put here also the numbers inside and also like you can see here which is the most important one this equals symbol and then we have here actually all our fields created. With this we have already accomplished a lot so we only need to create here this build button row and here inside we need to set then four parameters so the first one, the second and third and fourth and what we do then is to create for each individual item which we get here this button so we want to create this UI now. The first thing we do here is to create a new list with all the parameters which we get and then we simply create here a new row where we want to build for each individual item this new button design. Around our row we also want to put uh, expanded inside and we do this so that the buttons get here the maximum space and they are all equally distributed between our rows. After it we create actually all these buttons so we go over this row here and then we map this text which we get to a button and therefore I create here a new button widget which we want to create later and here inside we put then this individual text. So this could be like for example this one here and then we also want to implement here two methods. So the first one is if we click on this button and also if we later click longer on this button then we also can add some functionality for it. Therefore I have created here a new file where we put our button widget inside and here I also get the text which we then display for this button and also if we click on this button then we have here two callbacks. Now let's go to the build method and create an elevated button and here inside you need to set the on pressed and on long press which means if you later click on this button short then this is executed the first one and if you click here longer then the second one will be executed. 
Now we also want to place here inside our UI. So I create simply a text and we can also hot restart our application. And then you see that we have here all these buttons and we want to change the style of these buttons. So we actually change the text style and we put here a bigger font size inside. And after we also create here a font style where we actually put here the font size inside and also make our font in bold. And this looks then already much better, I guess. For the font size, I also increase the font size a bit for these operators. So basically I put here another font size for these here inside because it was too small. Therefore I put here a higher font size inside. Therefore I have created here this method and this method basically determines if it is an operator or not. And if you want to check this source code out, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get my Flutter course where I teach you how you can become a more advanced and better developer. Now let's go further and actually polish here our design a bit up. So the first thing what we want to do is to put here this expanded around and this will make that our buttons will expand here so that they get here the maximum space and they will equally distribute the space between all of these buttons. Then we also want to put here container around and we set first of all some margin so that we have here some space between our buttons. Then we also want to increase the height because right now it is not a square format. However, if you put here this height double infinity inside, then we have here actually this square format for our buttons. And if you compare now our design to the design which we want to reach, we are already pretty close. So only what we need to do is now to change here some colors of the background color and also this text color. What you also can see is that we have here a different symbol for this delete icon and that's also what we want to do. So we go here inside and go to our child and every time if we have this symbol here then we want to replace it by another symbol. So we put here an icon inside and there we take this backspace icon which looks then like this. So every time we have this text we simply replace it otherwise we show this normal text inside of our button. Now let's change also the style of our button. Therefore you call here this style property and then you can create this elevated button. And here inside we set first of all the shape. So you can set here for example this button to a rounded button and therefore you call here this rounded rectangle border and put here a radius inside. And this will look then like this. And if you want to have it more rounded then you also can change here this value. Then we also want to delete any shadows from this button. Therefore we call here elevation zero. And we also put here this color to a different color. And this will be a darker color, which I have here inside of this file. To make our UI more interesting, we also want to choose here different colors for some buttons. So basically the operators are in the red color and the delete buttons in the green color. To change the color for these buttons, we simply create here within our button widget a new method get text color. And here we put the button text inside on which we then determine what color we choose for this button. And here inside we put then a switch over this button text. And in case it is an operator, so if it is here on the right side, then we want to actually set here this red color for these buttons. And therefore I choose here simply from my colors this operator color, which is this red color here. Then we also want to choose here these other colors for this delete buttons. And like you can see in our design, it is then this green color. So I put here this green color inside for our delete, which is this color here. And lastly, we also can have here a default color for all the other buttons. So in my case, it will stay the same color and I will simply put it here to a white color. However, if you like, you can also later change here the colors of these numbers. And the next thing is to simply go to our build method and actually to call this get text color method, which we have created. And here inside we put then the text of our button and then we get here the color back. And now it's pretty simple. We simply replace here this text color. So we want to choose here a different text color. And also for our icon, which is for this special case here, we also want to set the new color inside. And then we need to hot reload. And then you see directly that our design looks exactly like the design what we wanted to accomplish here. 
The last thing what we want to create here in our design is also to put these results here to the top. And this is pretty simple. So we go here again to our main file. And here, like you remember, we actually created all the buttons here below. And this is then the top area which we want to implement right now. Instead of this container, we put then this build result method inside which we want to create. And here we basically create a column to display two texts under each other. And inside of it, we create first of all our first text. And then we also put here this overflow inside. So basically, if it gets here over this length of our row, then we want to actually have here some dots after it. And we also want to change here the style of our text. So I put here white color inside and a bigger font size. And lastly, we also create here some space and then the second text also zero. And here we put basically a gray color inside for this text and a smaller font size like before. This will look then like this. And now the only thing what we need to do is to align it here properly to the left side. And how you do this is by first of all, putting here this cross axis alignment to stretch. And this will make sure then that it is going here to the left side. And then we also want to put here it to the end. And therefore we put here main axis alignment to end. And the last thing we want to create here is to actually put a padding around so that we have here some space on the left and bottom side. And with this, we have actually accomplished this whole UI of our calculator. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.